This is Made for More Living with Johnny Jennings, powered by EXP Realty, online at madeformoreliving.com. On today's show, we have a very special guest, and we are going to be playing Truth or Dare. Hello, Liz. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Johnny? Doing okay. No, we're not playing Truth or Dare. (laughs) We're not doing that game, but we are going to be playing a little game of True or False, because you work for American Pacific Reverse Mortgage Group. Correct. And there's been a lot of changes in the last 30 years over what a reverse mortgage really is. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people hear reverse mortgage and they're like, "Mm, that's a scam. I'm not touching it with a 10 foot pole. So let's just do some quick rapid rapid fire questions here. If you, so the bank owns a home in a reverse mortgage, true or false? False. False, okay. False. So I got to tell you, I would say on a weekly basis when I, I speak to clients, that is the biggest myth and misconception. Although back in the day when reverse mortgages first came about, uh, banks created their own program. So each bank would create their reverse mortgage as to how they wanted it to run. Mm-hmm. And in those times, yes, once the borrower used up all the equity in the home, and they were either forced to made, make payments and they couldn't, then the bank would take the home back. Really? So absolutely, that used to be so, so long ago where that was the case. So what changed? Uh, so FHA and HUD stepped in and started to oversee the reverse mortgage product. And with that came many, many changes. And a lot of those change it, changes made it more consumer friendly. So- okay. The bank does not own the home. The borrower, whoever is on loan, is on title and vice versa. Okay? Okay. So let's just say somebody enters into a reverse mortgage and five years down the line, they say, you know what? We are out of here. We are tired of California because that never happens. Yeah, I never heard that before. (laughs) Um, And so they say, you know what? We're moving to a different state. We want to sell the home. A lot of people think that they are stuck with a reverse mortgage once they have it in place. Untrue. So at that point in time, they sell the home. They list it with Johnny Jennings. There you go. Love it. (laughs) And um, what happens at that point in time, whatever money they've used with the reverse mortgage, it's accrued interest and a little bit of mortgage insurance. Mm -hmm. Whatever the balance is at the time gets paid off through the sale, just like any other home. Just like a regular loan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what happens at that point in time is that no penalty, no harm, no foul. You just pay off that balance at the time and you take that remaining equity to whatever state you want to move to. Beautiful. Easy. So so basically, if you have a reverse mortgage in place, you own the home. It's the same. A lot of the same rules apply as a traditional loan. Correct. Got yeah. it. So that's not scary. No, no. If it's in it, And it's, of course, for the right situation and the right person. That's true. That's true. Well, how about this one? You can buy an investment or vacation home with proceeds from a reverse mortgage. True or false? You sure can. True. What? Yes. That's incredible. Yeah. You can have two homes. You can have your California home and you can have your, you know, Tennessee home. Right. Right. A lot of people go to Tennessee or Florida, somewhere by the beach. Or Tahoe. Tahoe. Oh, yeah. Yep, for sure. Get something in Trekkie, maybe. Absolutely. There you go. All right, so you can buy an investment property with the proceeds. You can. How about this one? You get taxed on a reverse mortgage on the proceeds. Do you get taxed, true or false? That is false. All reverse mortgage proceeds are tax-free because they're loan proceeds. Mm. They're not earned income. So you're not receiving a 1099 at the end of the year. You're just using the equity in your home to do what you wish wish with. Which is basically what a lot of the more ultra wealthy types do. They yes. take loans out on their existing assets. Mm-hmm. So that that's their income and they just pay it back. Correct. Got yeah. it. So yeah, it's a really good use of of uh, those funds and not having to hit, you know, anything that doesn't require taxes, you know. I know. Always hey, a good thing. <laughs> always want to avoid that, especially in California. Oh, yeah. So how about this one? You can buy anything you want with the proceeds from a reverse mortgage included, but not limited to, a Louis Vuitton purse. You are speaking my language. Yep. <laughs> you can use the reverse proceeds for whatever you wish. We don't question what you're going to use them for. Um, although the one thing that um, we steer away from is uh, buying annuities 
within the transaction. So let's just say somebody wants to send some money over to a financial advisor to mm-hmm. invest in annuities. That has that is a lar- arm's length transaction. We can't do that. So whatever they choose to do after we close is up to them. But in the loan application, it does ask a couple of times if the proceeds are going to be used for that. Got it. So. Okay. So but once it closes, the funds are yours to do with as you see fit. Correct. So you can go out, you know, buy an investment property, yeah. buy, a, buy a Louis Vuitton purse. A mall. Buy a mall. <laughs> buy buy whatever you want with it. Correct. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And then how about this one? You can rent out a home with a reverse mortgage. True or false? So that might be a trick question, right? You can not rent out the home once you have a reverse mortgage in okay. place. But let's say you have a single person in this current economy that we're in and you know they're on a fixed in- income and they're struggling a little bit to get by. You can rent out a room. Oh. Yeah, so if they if they want to, you know, have a roommate, you know, collect some rent, um, alleviate some of that financial pressure. Yeah. Yes, you can rent out a room, but you cannot rent out the home. And I'll elaborate a little little bit on that because when you enter into a reverse mortgage, um, people will say, "Well, how are they going to know, right? What, it, yeah. what how are they going to know if I rent it out?" Um, once a year, they do an occupancy check, right? What does that mean? (laughs) So they want to make sure you're living in the home. So I'm going to give you an example of a family member who did a reverse mortgage. And um, every about the time that you did the loan, they sent out a letter. And it's usually a bright envelope, usually like pink or orange fluorescent. So you don't miss it. Sure. And so it all it states is, you know, your address, who was on the reverse mortgage, and then do you still occupy the residence at, right? Mm -hmm. You sign it, you date it, you send it back. That, that clears things up, right? You still live in the home. But if you don't respond to that, they send a second letter, same thing, bright colored, all the things. You don't send that back. Whoever you put, whoever the borrower puts as their alternative contact on that loan application is going to receive a phone call, right? Mm. So that was me. I get the phone call. Does your so-and-so still reside at this property? They have a reverse mortgage with us and we've sent out a couple of letters and have gotten no response. Okay. That was me for make to make the phone call. Hey, have you received these letters from the reverse mortgage company stating, you know, that you still live in the home? Oh yeah, I think I got them, but I tossed them. All right. So what you do, what happens next is that you have to provide the reverse mortgage servicer who is sending out the statements. You have to provide them with a letter saying that you still reside in the home, has to be notarized, as well as documents, your driver's license with the property address and a bill, like a utility bill that states their name and the property address. It has to be a recent bill. So you have to send all those documents in to prove that you still live in the home um, but at some point in time, if those things, if the alternative contact doesn't reach out, then they'll, they'll check. They have ways of finding out. So what happens if somebody's rented out the property or I've even heard stories where the person has passed mm-hmm. and they're still collecting checks on for them the reverse more and they just haven't reported it? Like what happens if any of those guidelines have been broken? Like what's the next step for the bank or for the family? So the bank could call that note due. And is it due like immediately? Is it 90 days? Like how does that work? The, the servicing lender will send out a, a letter saying you ha- there has to be something done within 30 days. 30 days. Yeah. Typically and if they days. don't, then it goes back to the bank? Um, so then they'll, they'll start the procedure of... A normal foreclosure? Yes, correct. So that's like that 30 day maybe be like the, the notice of default? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So it's a first notice. Okay. You know, and then they, they'll continue the process uh, and they each servicing lender has their process of how to deal with that. But yeah, if they find out that somebody is not living in the home, that is part of the application process is the four things that you have to keep in place is you must live in the home as a primary residence. Mm-hmm. You, you can have a second home and go back and forth. That's fine. Let the servicing lender know that you're going to be gone for a certain period of time. If you're going to be a long, gone a long time. You must pay your property taxes and homeowner's insurance on time. That is like a biggie, right? Yeah. And then any other property fees like HOAs or anything like that, make those payments. And then keep the home 
in good condition. Doesn't have to be Taj Mahal, mm-hmm. but just make sure that you're taking care of that home. If things break, uh, there's a root, a hole in the roof. You got to fix that. Those are things that are safety and hazard issues to the borrower. Yeah, and that makes sense too. Like it's still your home. Treat it like it's your home. Yes. Yeah. Because so, be, I think that's why people and it still has kind of a stigma. Is that oh well, people that have a reverse mortgage, you know, don't take care of their home or they trash it because it's going to go back to the bank. Mm-hmm. Well, what if you want to sell that home and you want your highest dollar five years down the line? Yeah. Why would you do that? Yeah. Yeah. You're just shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. Yeah. So that leads me to my last question is you can't buy a home or last statement. You can't buy a home with a reverse mortgage. True or false? You can buy a home using a reverse mortgage. It's called a Heckam for purchase. A Heckam for purchase. Yeah. So Heckam means home equity conversion mortgage. And they changed the name of a reverse mortgage to make it sound probably, you know, better and and kind of get rid of some of those myths. But it's the same thing. It's a reverse mortgage. It's just different terminology. And when I entered into this niche of the industry 15 years ago, it actually took an act of Congress to make the reverse mortgage a purchase tool. Really? Yes. So it's only been around for 15 years. Wow. Um, and it's a really good use, especially knowing that people of the age demographic to qualify for a reverse mortgage are usually the ones that have the most equity to move from home to home. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of downsizing. So people that have that big home, now they're empty nesters and they're like, you know what? We have a two story. This doesn't work for us anymore. We have a ton of dispensable space. We don't want to deal with that anymore. Let's take our equity and move it into a smaller home and not have a principal and interest payment. Mm -hmm. That is always the goal with the reverse mortgage is that you're not going to have a principal and interest payment moving forward. That's so cool. So we've actually done um, a deal where somebody in, I can't remember the city, man, this is where, this is where Valerie comes in handy. (laughs) But um, I think it was Antelope. The person had bought a home in Antelope using a reverse mortgage and they decided, Hey, you know what? They're like the only person that's ever said this, right? They want to leave California. And so (laughs) they, uh, they uh, decided, Hey, we're going to sell, or she decided we're going to, I'm going to sell this home. I'm going to buy another home in, I think it was Utah, Park City, Utah. Mm-hmm. And she was so excited with what she was able to do. Because she, keep in mind, she had a reverse mortgage on this property already. Yep. Yep. She sold the home, mm-hmm. took the proceeds from the sale, mm-hmm. bought a home in Park City, Utah with another reverse mortgage. Correct. And she was so ecstatic. Yep. yep. It is a really good tool for relocating, for right sizing. And you'd be surprised at how many people not just, you know, go into a smaller home, but we're talking right now about baby boomers. So, you know, people that are older than baby boomers, they just want a roof over their head. Baby boomers don't want a roof over their head. They want the house, Mm -hmm. right? They want... It's a lifestyle. Yeah, it's a lifestyle. And so if they own a home outright, you know, and they, they they have no payment and they want to move in a bigger home, into a bigger home, but still have no payment, this is the perfect opportunity to do that with. It's so incredible. Like there's just, so hopefully if you're listening to this, you're getting the idea that reverse mortgage, these are not your granddaddy's reverse mortgages. These are a whole new product. And actually when we come back, we're going to be talking about how having a reverse mortgage on a property is a lot like winning the lottery. Back after this. Mike, do you think it's possible to have your cake and eat it too? According to my dad growing up, absolutely not. Well, especially if it's German chocolate cake. Mm, Mm. Oh my goodness. Well, it is actually possible, especially if you're selling your home and you're working with our good buddy, Johnny Jennings and the Tom Day's real estate team. Listen to this. Margie and Ben, they wanted to sell their mother's home in Rancho Cordova, but here's the thing. They wanted to sell it as is with no repairs and for top dollar. So they wanted their cake and eat it too. But guess what happened? Johnny Jennings made it happen the first weekend on the market and brought them 
them eight offers, sold for almost $20,000 over list price. That is what happens when you work with the professionals of uh, Johnny Jennings and the Tom Dave's real estate team. Uh, so if you want to get top dollar for your house, maybe you're curious what kind of offers you can get, or you just want a cash offer and you want to be done, uh, call them today at 855-TOM-DAVES, or you can always go online to TomDaves.com. That's Tom. D-A-V-E-S dot com. License number 581-837.